Hey you guys, how's it going? Welcome to another packing video. This beautiful, colorful array of stuff is everything I would take on the Cleveland Way, a trail that's about 110 miles in length, kind of forms like an N shape, so it starts at Helmsley, goes round through the North York Moors and just amazing, amazing landscapes, all the way to Filey on the coast, kind of near Scarborough and Robin Hood's Bay. It crosses over with the Wainwrights coast to coast, and I am yet to walk this trail. I had it on my list for this year, and I basically, I've had my rucksack packed for a while because I'm just hoping for a chance to be able to get out there. Uh, for myself, I've worked out a schedule to be able to walk it in six days, but most people take about nine days. It doesn't really matter. It's your journey on the trail. Enjoy it. That's what we're all about here at Songfresh Productions, is spending more time in the wild, making the most of that experience. But um, if you've watched any of my other packing videos, you'll probably see that this is all the standard stuff that I take on any trail. Um, I take it time and time again because it works for me. I don't pride myself in being a super lightweight backpacker, but I do pride myself in being functional. Everything I carry on my back, I use. And of course, I'm a filmmaker. I have to carry quite a lot of camera gear. Uh, so my pack's generally a little bit heavier than most people on the trail, but that's fine by me. That's how I work. And um, the idea of this video basically is to give you a quick rundown of the sort of things I'm gonna take when I hit the trail and just give you some ideas so that you can sort of form your own backpack around it, look at some of the essentials, look at some specific pieces of kit that I carry. Uh, all the links for different reviews will be below, so do check those out as well. But without further ado, let's get started. So to start with, I'm gonna start with what I'm wearing. Basically, believe it or not, I'm gonna wear a t-shirt and I've got my Montaigne Terra pants here. Uh, I really trust these trousers, I love them. I'm literally just gonna take what I'm wearing, this is it, uh, in terms of clothing that I'll walk in. We'll look at some other pieces of kit as well. Uh, I'll be wearing walking socks, and then the boots I'm gonna use are these Salomon boots. These aren't on the market anymore, but I'll pop the link below anyway. Uh, this is my second pair of these guys. I managed to get them <laughs> online just really quickly before they were pulled from the shelves because uh, they've done new models and stuff, but I love these and they're pretty much brand new, so pretty stoked to walk some miles into these guys. So those are the boots that I'll be wearing. The backpack I'll be carrying then is my trusty Osprey Exos. So this is a 48 litre backpack. You can get it in 58 as well. This is a, a kind of unisex backpack, um, but there is the women specific and I don't know, it all gets complicated. But basically, this tends to fit most people. Uh, as you can see, it's been nibbled by mice and torn by the brambles, but this is as much a part of me as my hat is really. Um, so the 48 litre, you can check out the review for that below. There is a newer model that's come out, but I'm sticking with my old one. I know a lot of people have tried to grab these off the shelves as well, uh, because the newer one just doesn't tick as many boxes. So Osprey Exos, 48 litres. I would use this pretty much any, for anything up to two weeks on the trail, so 14 days. I could fit everything I want in here. Um, and it's how I pack as much as what I pack that allows me to use a 48 litre backpack. On the bottom here, the one thing I haven't detached just because it's a little bit fiddly, this uh, blue dry bag, this is my tent. So I use at the moment the Hilleberg Acto. It's a one person sort of five season tent. I really trust it in the storms, in the mountains, in the snow. Um, and actually, arguably, it's not really the right tent for this trip. It is quite heavy. It's 1.6 kilograms in weight. I've got, again, the review, click the link below. Um, but, you know, you could go with something a lot simpler and a lot less expensive for this this type of trail. You know, you could go for a Van Gogh or a Terra Nova or something that's got less of a price tag and just suits you just fine. Of course, if you're not hiking on your own, you could have a two-person tent and split that weight. So there's lots of options with tents there. But for me at the moment, I use the Hilleberg Acto. So what we're gonna do now is start to work our way through this beautiful mass of stuff and pop it in the backpack so we can see this when it's all full up. So I'm gonna start with the main compartment. First thing first that always goes in for me is my sleeping bag. This is the Rab Neutrino 400. I'm still, well, it's new this year, <laughs> uh, but I've done a good seven, 800 miles in it now, and I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. I love the fact that it's got a zip at the bottom, zip at the top. It's got a little pocket thing, so I can keep my phone in there, keep it nice and warm. Uh, this just works for me. Again, it's a little bit bulky uh, for a sort of summer tent, uh, uh, sleeping bag, sorry, but you know, it works. Anyway, so this goes at the bottom for me. This is the last thing to come out once my tent's up, once I've got my roll mat all blown up and everything's good to go. Talking of roll mats, that's the next thing. So this here is the Thermarest Adventure. This is a nice sort of neon green, just like my jacket there. And um, it's not self-inflating, but it takes me roughly 18 to 20 breaths to blow it up. 
tell how many times I've done that. <laughs> um, I do keep it in this little pack. I've not actually rolled it up very well this time, uh, but it's just nice because it sits on top of the sleeping bag there, resting against the back. And then alongside that rather conveniently shaped is the jet boil. So this is my jet boil flash. This is a nice lightweight aluminium uh, bowl. I, I always struggle with the word bowl. <laughs> uh, what it has got is this sort of plastic film thing which adds quite a bit of weight to it that's crazy light but this is definitely heavier than this uh, but what this does help me with is basically being lazy <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I scrape this with a spork it just is clean I mean it looks clean and that's how I work that's hygiene in my world <laughs> so um, I carry this a little bit of extra weight because very rarely will I rinse or wash up a bowl because then it will just stay wet so that's the bowl that I use um, and again arguably I could cook in my jet boil but again it just saves washing up it's just so easy to use this and I've got a mug as well so it just works <laughs> uh, inside the jet boil so it's a nice compact system as they all are you've got the little tripod stand there so it sits on that just to aid some stability you know at campsites and world camp you just the ground is generally not flat <laughs> uh, then we've got the actual igniter bit and then the gas so that all sits in there quite nicely. Bowl sits on the bottom there, and then it goes next to my uh, sleeping mat, and they just are all nice and happy. The next thing that goes in is this dry bag. So I have two red dry, three red dry bags, <laughs> and they all do different things. Uh, so this one here is for, no, it's not even that one. Not that one. That one, this is the one I want. <laughs> I can feel the contents, you see. So this is my GoPro bag. In here, I've got uh, lots of spare batteries. I've actually got a, uh, a shutter release for my DSLR. The DSLR that I film on when I'm on the trail is the Canon 70D. I use the VideoMic Pro and a Manfrotto lightweight tripod that could be lighter, let's be honest. Um, but anyway, so this is kind of my little camera goodie bag thing. I only ever access this at night, uh, I literally, or in the morning. So I'll take out the spare batteries and things I think I might need for the day and I'll keep them somewhere like in my hip pocket so that just stays nestled away from the elements and it only ever really comes out inside of my tent. Uh, so next up then, this arguably very rarely actually sits here but generally the first day when I'm out on the trail I just pack it nice and compact. This is my first aid kit so in here I've got a mixture of sort of tablets, tissues, I've got a little uh, foil blanket and I've got all sorts of dressings and things. Everything in here I know how to use. Uh, I've also got some scissors and some physio tape so sometimes I use that on my back, on my knees or even on my heels just to prevent those blisters, those hot spots, get them covered over nice and quickly and uh, stop any rubbing. I only really get blisters to be honest if my feet are just wet all the time so um, I very rarely need to use that stuff anyway. So that all sits in there nicely. The next thing that goes in is my wash kit, which really shouldn't be next to the first aid kit in terms of priority, but um, there we go. So in here, just a nice lightweight, clear Ziploc bag. I've got a um, towel, a nice lightweight towel there. I've got some wipes. I, they were in there from Scotland, to be honest, so, because I didn't really wash, so. <laughs> and then a little bit of shampoo uh, and biodegradable soap and stuff. And then I've got some foot cream, so some mint sort of cream that I put on my feet every single night religiously just to again uh, sort of help prevent the the growth of bacteria I'm always always washing my feet looking after my feet and again that's another reason why I don't really get blisters and then I have half a toothbrush obviously the brushing bit and a little bit of toothpaste so that all crams in there quite nicely I could arguably have a little bit of a smaller towel it's about that big when it comes out so it's I could just take a hand towel but never mind it works for me uh, right, what goes in next? This one, a nice Tesco's bag. <laughs> in here then what I've got is my waterproof trousers. So I've got Berghaus trousers which have a full zip so I can open them up for ventilation. And then I've also got uh, my ankle gaiters. Really honestly cannot stand full length gaiters. Very, very rarely need them. Um, so in here then I keep my ankle gaiters and again I'll be prepping ahead so if I've seen the forecast of the weather's feeling a bit damp and airy I'll get these out, I'll have them nearer the top, I'll have them in the front po um, pocket You know this isn't set, I can fiddle with this and, and make it work on each day depending on the weather and how I'm feeling and the distance I have to walk as well so there we go, that's all sitting nicely. At the moment we kind of got a nice layer on top of the sleeping bag so you can imagine how this is being packed in the compartments uh, up next then I've got this green dry bag, so this is nice and compressed, and I'm going to clearly uncompress it. Um, so in here then, this is my clothing bag. What I've got is a nice sparse amount of clothing, mostly made of socks. <laughs> so I have three pairs of socks, one of which, this one, I sleep in in the night. Ooh, numb feet. 
there we go that's better <laughs> so i sleep in these guys in the night so once i put that uh that sort of minty creamy stuff on my feet i'll pop that on top and i'll just allow them to breathe throughout the night uh, and then these two i'll change into along with the ones that i've been wearing so i'm rotating my shoes and uh, my socks sorry basically every couple of days and again just pre preventing that bacterial growth uh random pair of pants trying to escape there <laughs> Uh, yep, that is one pair of pants. And then what I've got here is a t-shirt and a pair of shorts to sleep in. So that's it in terms of spare clothing. Uh, arguably, I could bring a spare pair of trousers or another top to walk in, but I could use this in an emergency. And if I carry another pair of trousers, you know, all that's going to happen is I'll end up carrying a wet pair of trousers. And it just seems a bit pointless to me. That's extra weight. Uh, if I can just deal with the discomfort momentarily of putting on wet sweaty clothes every morning and it's only six days um, then there's no point in me carrying another pair it just keeps that weight down a little bit which is is quite important really just to aid the enjoyment of your time on the trail uh, this then this is probably the heaviest thing i carry this is my food bag um, so what the nice thing about the trails in the uk um, or in england anyway is they're very rarely remote you know every other day you're probably going to go through somewhere you're going to access food points, places you can top up on supplies. So this is definitely a bit excessive. Um, I'm just actually trying to use up food. So what I've got here is a porridge sachet uh, for every single day. I've also got a couple of cup of soup things so I can drink those in the height of luxury. And uh, what I've got is some tea bags. I really like to try and pick up milk as often as I can just to have a brew. That's a real morale booster. And then in terms of evening meals, I have one evening meal and even this could be supplemented with other stuff. This is literally a bag of couscous. Nice 39p Lidl's one. These are definitely my favorite, hands down. Um, so the idea is each day I'll pass through somewhere. I've already done the research ahead and I can pick up some supplies on the trail. So there's no point in me carrying the extra one to 200 grams. <laughs> it adds up <laughs> just for the sake of it, you know? Um, and then what I've got is again more luxury stuff so some mint tea bags, a couple of latte sachets for the longer days and then basically just a whole load of cereal bars. I've got some Chia Charge bars here, I've got some whole food bar thingies, I've got some banana loaves, I've got some berry OT things and um, there's plenty there. There's a, I think I've got about two a day there uh, and I'll probably half that. In fact I'll probably just eat it all on the train. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> um, I love to pick up bananas, the odd apple here and there. I like to buy cherry tomatoes, things like that, just to get some color in that I normally have in my diet, like here when I'm home. Uh, it's really, really important for me to get those vitamins and minerals because it's such a shock to my system. So that is why, another reason why I have the raw fruit bars, I'll take dates. Um, you know, I manipulate my diet as best as I can uh, based upon the, you know, the circumstances around me this time of year. There's blackberries galore, so I'll nibble on them as I go, get some vitamin C, I'll pick apples, pears, uh, you know, damsons, all sorts of things. So it's nice to know the plants, where you can find things based upon the different uh, environments that you're walking through. Anyway, so that's food for now. Next up then is ooh, this guy. So this is my Patagonia Nano Puff hoodie. Nothing much to say about that. That's an insulating layer that I try not to walk in. It's just an additional layer there. What I do walk in is this scruffy mess thing. This is my uh, Rab jacket. I'm not even sure what make it is now. Um, the only problem with this, now I love this to pieces, it's, it, but it is quite heavy and it's 10% cotton. So what I've found uh, throughout this season that I've been using it is when it gets sweaty, when it starts to drizzle, that just retains the moisture and it doesn't dry out so it stays damp and then I get cool and just doesn't really work but at the moment I love it well I do love it uh, but I am looking for alternatives there so what you can see anyway is I've got one two different insulating layers now the other layer I could also add is my waterproof so this is the mountain equipment La Hotsi jacket again not the lightest waterproof out there but it's certainly bomb proof well I'm not volunteering to try that but you get the idea <laughs> Uh, it's a nice jacket i can roll it up so it fits in the the rucksack and that's my waterproof layer so what i tend to find is especially when i'm on the go is all i need to do is just whack my waterproof coat on and um that's just gonna keep me warm for a little bit and then when it comes to stopping i'll put on uh, an extra insulating layer and then take it off once i get going again now if we flip this round we got the underside of the top pocket in here i keep uh, these electrolyte tablets so i tend to have one or two of those a day they just 
boost me I guess I, I quite like having them they're also a nice excuse to drink some water I've got my head torch so that's nice and accessible I got a spork arguably as important as the head torch <laughs> and then I've just got a couple of like tablet things I've got some water purifying tablets and just energy stuff in there that I need to keep accessible so that is that and then if we come flip that back around again to the top pocket what would I keep in here well, usually this is in my hip belt, but just a little uh, like Vaseline thing for my lips. And then a nice assortment of hand gels, tissues, sun cream, uh, bite and sting cream, ibuprofen gels. So that's all there. Again, nice quick access. And then the next red dry bag. So this one's got my wallet in. It's got a portable charger for my phone. Um, and I think just a socket, just to charge things from a socket. <laughs> so that's that one there. That goes in the top as well. And then that tends to give it a nice balanced weight so that when it comes to clipping it to the bottom it just all sits quite nicely and now we've got the front pocket so this one's great because it's nice stretchy elastic stuff so in here this is my kind of travel buddy um so i've got a nice uh little notepad that i write in i, I write every single evening on the trail just to sort of document what's been going on for the films and then I've got the guidebook. So actually this will be in my hand most of the time. So the guidebook for this one is the official National Trails Guide. There isn't a, um, a trailblazer guide or anything like that. It is just the National Trails one. So hopefully that'll do the job. And then of course I've got my itinerary in there as well. So that's all there. Clip that on. And then it just sits there on the front. Alongside that is a Lidl's bag. Clearly I'm trying to not segregate against the shops. I have a hat, a woolly hat. I've got some gloves and some fingerless gloves so that's the two there arguably don't need both of those but actually sometimes i do just need my fingers accessible when i'm working with cameras so i tend to bring the two and then next up oh we're back to tesco's i've got uh, my flip-flops these aren't the lightest in the world i'm actually just trying to wear them out so i'm going to take them for this next trip but they're made of recycled materials and they can be recycled which is nice so just some flip-flops for when I'm walking around camp just to make sure my feet are airing as much as possible I have a spare dry bag I tend to keep my video mic pro in that when I'm on the trail and then also here usually sits my tripod when I'm on the trail it's not accessible for me to whip out I keep it on my backpack just because that's where it sits best to balance out that weight so that goes on the front this bag here is my camera bag so I keep this on the front of my body and in here I've got spare batteries, spare SD cards and just a, a lens washer thing. So that's that one and if I move that there, the final things really to go in are bottles. So obviously these are empty so I've got this, uh, this is a steamer which is quite nice and lightweight bottle there and then I have a titanium mug which is really nice and light and then in that sits my flask. I do like the kind of old school flasks, even though they're heavy, uh, but they keep things nice and cool. And then my phone, that tends to go in the hip pocket. I'm just gonna leave that there because it's holding down this mat. And then occasionally I'll take a stick, but usually I'll just find an actual stick from a tree and become friends with that. So that's everything apart from the GoPro. That's what I film on at the moment is a GoPro Hero 3 Plus, but I have just got a five and I'm still, um, just experimenting with that to get comfortable and then hopefully we can get some better quality stuff and really capture the beauty of the landscape around us but that is everything guys that i would take on the cleveland way 110 miles from helmsley to filey if you've got any questions uh, about the trail or about sort of packing how to pack things what to pack then please do just comment below you know we're all in this together we're all about encouraging people to get outside and spend more time in the wild so in the meantime thank you so much for watching i'll see you next monday or maybe even on the trail enjoy your adventures and stay wild <laughs>